Oh my god, what is going, what is going on? on? A lot of people have seen my um, opinion on Etihad and the unsatisfactory service I had when I flew their first class. This year, it's five years since I posted my viral Etihad review that allowed me to work with this full time. Please don't watch it because I'm embarrassed by it nowadays and I didn't expect it to blow up like it did. Nowadays, I wouldn't necessarily make it such a big deal. <laughs> What exactly happened on that flight? The crew were basically really uncomfortable with me recording my experience, which is crazy to think because now in 2023, everyone is recording and taking photos. And they ended up being rude and completely stopped bothering trying to provide me with good service because of it. So what has changed since then and why should you listen to me? I'm Nonstop Dan, a half Swede and half American who has been obsessed with airplanes for as long as I can remember. Over the past eight years, I've been lucky to call reviewing airlines my full-time job and in that time I've flown 150 different airlines so I hope this video helps you with your choices so I made it to the airport I'm getting a little nervous because I haven't flown Etihad since that review not because I didn't want to fly them but because I was scared I might be banned or even worse be convicted of something you never know I'll let you put two and two together but the irony is that I love Emirates and I like Etihad too despite my last video so today I'm biting the bullet to see if my year-long fears were correct or if I was just being overly cautious I decide to head to my gate after a quick hop into the lounge. This one's really nothing to see, so I just go stand in line, waiting curiously to see if they'll let me board. So let's see if I make it to Dubai tonight via Abu Dhabi. Hopefully there's no hiccups along the way because I'm so excited to fly Etihad. I flew their business class before, but that's almost five years ago. And obviously my experiences and my references have increased a lot since then. So naturally, I'm very curious to see how it goes. So with that, let's go. I've decided to wear a mask is a little bit of an anonymity precaution just in case. I approach the counter, hand them my boarding pass and beep, I'm let through. Well, my boarding pass scanned and I'm through. So, so far, so good. Now the question is what will happen on landing in Abu Dhabi? Anyway, I am super excited now as I get closer to my stunning Etihad 787. I am ready for the Etihad experience. And you can't tell me that Etihad doesn't have the most beautiful livery in the world. Well, maybe besides Air New Zealand's black livery. The Etihad Airways 787-9 is in a two-class configuration with 299 seats, of which 28 are business class between doors one and two. Some seats face forward and some face backwards, with window seats alternating between being closer to the window and closer to the aisle. In this situation, it's very obvious which seats are best, namely the forward-facing seats in the even-numbered rows. I managed to snag my favorite seat, which is always at the back of the cabin. People sometimes ask why I always choose to sit in the back, and it's mainly because of the additional privacy I get when filming. And of course, the amazing engine views. If you're traveling together, the honeymoon forward-facing seats in the middle could be great, but there are many good ways to sit together as you'll see now that we hop on board. Welcome on board Etihad Airways. I can't believe I'm saying this for the first time in all these years. The cabin looks a little gloomy in this quote unquote daylight, but the finishes are stunning and add a lot of warmth to the color outside. As you can see here, the honeymoon seats are pretty private and nice for traveling together. Meanwhile, the seats that are closer to the aisle have pretty much no privacy at all. As I settle in, the crew come by with the pre-departure beverages. Since this is a morning flight, I have a choice of a few different juices and I opt for grapefruit juice. 2022 was my year of grapefruit obsession and I'm glad to see that's following me into this year as well. It sort of feels like Christmas when you board Etihad because they give you so many things. They give you a huge travel health kit while many other airlines have stopped doing that long ago. They also provide this beautiful Aqua de Parma amenity kit which we'll have a look at shortly of course as well as the menu and the headphones. As I noticed years ago and rediscovered now, the service on Etihad is nowhere near as polished as most other Middle Eastern airlines. That doesn't mean it's bad, it's just more in line with what you'll expect on a European carrier where smiles seem to cost extra. Of course, I'm very excited that they have hot towels. Listen, I think we're just going to push back before I show you anything because I don't want to be recording too much while the crew can still pay attention to what I'm doing. So let's depart gloomy Brussels and head to the sunny UAE.
The Etihad Dreamliner is a stunner. If there's one thing I hope you've learned from my videos, it's that I love a good little lamp. It adds so much coziness to the seat. Let's quickly look around so I can show you what we have in terms of storage because there's a lot of space for your stuff. Down here, we have our relatively limited seat controls. In addition to the huge entertainment screen, we also have a remote, which acts as another screen where you can see the in-flight map, for example. And next to that, we have some charging. The main power port in my seat isn't working, but luckily the seat next to me is unoccupied, so I can simply charge there whenever I need to. In terms of privacy, this seat was industry leading when it was introduced. That was almost a decade ago, but I'd say in many ways, the seat is still industry leading. However, privacy has come so far today that you feel relatively exposed here compared to many of the other cutting edge seats nowadays. Now, Etihad's entertainment system is fantastic. And though the selection isn't quite as large as on Emirates and Qatar Airways, I think Etihad might have the best in-flight entertainment system design of any airline in the world. I love how they make it so easy to search for what you want, which far too many airlines don't allow. The name eBox does sort of crack me up though. The accompanying headphones are pretty good good. There's also onboard Wi-Fi, which costs about $16 for a six hour flight. But I also like that they have the option to buy a 24 hour pass, which even works on connecting flights, something we don't see very often. The first thing I did when I connected to Wi-Fi was to check my stock and index investments, which wasn't the best idea. Honestly, I'm used to seeing bad results by now. The stock market just came off its worst year since the financial crisis of 2008. Everyone is just trying to figure out what to do with their money right now. And I am going to look to millionaires and billionaires to figure out what to do. In times like these, many of them love to pour their money into assets that are not correlated to the stock market. And records show the last time inflation was this high, one particular alternative asset had an annual appreciation of about 20% on average. Spoiler alert, that asset class is fine art. That's why I think today's video sponsor is incredible because they let you invest in this asset class without having millions of dollars. I'm talking about masterworks.com. What I love about Masterworks is that they've delivered real results, paying out almost 26 million million dollars just last year. I'm continuously amazed by how easy they make it to invest in art by icons like Banksy and Picasso. But the really incredible part is Masterworks results. With 11 exits so far, every single one has returned a profit to their users. With over 650,000 members, there's quite a wait to join Masterworks. But I'm giving you guys a fast pass to join Masterworks and skip the line by clicking that link right now at the top of my description. The stress of my inbound trip on British Airways and getting virtually no sleep is making me feel pretty horrible on this flight. So I ask for some tea and try to relax. This is served on a gorgeous tray along with some roasted and salted nuts. This is one thing that Etihad and I have in common. We both love serving piping hot tea, which is why you should subscribe to me because you're always getting the most honest and unbiased reviews. So click that button because it's free and takes just a second. Okay, but seriously, I love how they present the tea on this tray. I guess now's a good time to have a look at the in-flight menu, which is on this thick, massive sheet of paper. This menu is absolutely massive for a six hour flight and oh so impressive. The best thing of all is that Etihad offers dine on demand, something that is very rare in business class. This means you can eat whatever you want when you want, so I have my meal two hours into the flight. Of course, I pre-ordered a special meal, but my appetizer is the Arabic meza from the menu. Although it's presented on a tray, which I don't generally love, the presentation is beautiful and looks oh so appetizing. You can't tell me this doesn't make you hungry. For the main course, they serve me gnocchi with some tomato sauce and spinach. It's pretty good, but not super memorable. For dessert, a variety of tasty fruit. Overall, the meal service is good, but not remarkable. I like that everything is served exactly when I request it and in quite an efficient manner. But then again, when business class is only half full, there's plenty of crew to make sure things go smoothly. After the meal, I really feel like I need to take a nap and never wake up. But before I do that, I need to head to the lavatory. I think Etihad is some of the most classy lavatories in the sky. When I get back to my seat, I'm excited to unbox the health kit and the amenity kit to see if there's anything that can help me sleep. 
The health kit has all types of great contents to help you stay healthy, shocker. Early in the pandemic, Etihad introduced these strange custom masks. They don't look very good or feel very protective, but I still think it's such a cool concept for an airline to make completely custom protective gear. Now, let's skip to the good part, the amazing Aqua de Parma amenity kit. It contains a huge thing of body lotion and some cologne, plus a toothbrush, toothpaste, eye mask, and socks. I guess it doesn't have the most practical contents. I mean, you'd open this and expect a gold necklace, not a tiny toothbrush and moisturizer, but the exterior of the kit is so nice that you have to love it. With that, let's recline and take a nap above the clouds. Etihad supposedly started offering mattress pads again recently, but that was not offered on this flight and there's nothing besides the standard bedding. Does anyone know if the mattress pad is just an A350 thing? Regardless, the pillow and blanket are super cozy and you won't have trouble getting comfortable here. In terms of temperature, sadly, Etihad does not have individual air vents. After I wake up, I realize I can order drinks via the entertainment system, which has been the case on a few airlines for years, but I'm surprised it's not more common. I mean, it's a lot of fun, so I order some tea, which is served along with a little piece of chocolate. I ask the crew if they can prepare my pre-landing meal, which they gladly serve after just a few minutes. This meal is very Europe meets the US, with a tasty but uninspired vegetable sandwich, which is served with a side of potato chips. Well, fancy potato chips, given the presentation. To be honest, I'm not really hungry after the first meal anyway. As we start our descent, the sun is setting over the gulf and what a beautiful sunset we're treated to. The crew come by to hand out fast track immigration passes to business class passengers and play the pre-arrival video. Soon enough, we touch down in Abu Dhabi where we have a bus gate and of course have to deal with the nightmare that is Abu Dhabi airport, but that's a whole different topic. So I guess you can tell there weren't any problems after landing either, thankfully, and I'm so happy I can confidently fly Etihad again. They're really a great option to have, but I'm fascinated that my conclusions from 2017 and 2018 are basically unchanged. For some reason, Etihad just feels like an above average European airline to me. I wouldn't say it makes sense to go out of your way to fly Etihad, and I certainly wouldn't go out of my way to fly them over any Gulf competitors. But the onboard experience is nice and I definitely don't think you'll be disappointed. With that, thank you so much for watching you guys. I'm sorry about the delay since my last video. It's been a lot. I have some more videos coming much, much sooner this time, I promise. And until I see you in the next video, fly safe.